In this video, we will take a look on how to add authentication to your Next.js 13 application using NextAuth. We won't go into details on how NextAuth works, but we will rather see how to use the authentication inside the new app folder that came with Next.js 13. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so here I have a Next.js 13 application open that I already did some work on. And what I did was actually just this getting started portion of the next auth. So I created a new project with create next app. Then I added the next auth package to it. Then I created this next auth API route and then modified the app.js to correspond to this one over here. And next I created this login button component with this code over here. So let's take a look on this in the VS code. So first of all, here is the app.js. It has the session provider wrapping the component. And inside of the index, we are displaying a heading and then the login button. And here is the login button. So right here, it's basically the same code as it was in the documentation. Only difference is that we are also rendering this user information component that gets the session user as a prop. And what that does is it only just displays the user data as JSON. And last, we have the API route. So the slash API slash auth slash next auth. And this is the same code that was in the documentation up here, I think. Yeah, over here. So basically, I just followed this getting started section of the next auth documentation. I leave a GitHub link to the description so you can check out this code. And I'm thinking of creating just a new branch for this starting position. So you can check out this if you want to follow along. So let's just quickly see how the application looks. So I will start the server and switch to the browser like this. So we have the heading and then the login button saying that we are not signed in. And when we click sign in, we will be prompted with sign in with GitHub. And when we click that, we can sign into the application and we see our information down here. And then we can sign out from the sign out button over here. So sign in, sign in with GitHub, and it will display our information over here. So as you can see, this is very basic example. And I wanted to keep it that way because my thought was that I want to see how I can convert this application using the pages folder and the authentication in there, uh, how I can convert that to using the Next.js 13 app folder and the server and client components. So that will be the focus of this video. So we will basically now uh, take this application and convert it to use the app folder. So let's get started by first adding the app folder over here. And then let's add a new file called page inside of it. And from here, I will export a function like this. And then I will add to the Next.js config the app experimental property like this. And this is just because at the moment the app there is still experimental. So we need to define it in the Next.js conf. Then let's try to run this. So yarn dev. And looks like we are getting an error about the index and page JS conflicting. So let me just rename this index real quick like this and then restart the server and check the browser. Okay, we get the text from the page.js file over here. So we are now using this page.js. So next, let's just copy paste everything from the index.js to the page.js like this. And I'll just rename this the page. And now we can see we are importing the login button. So let's actually move the login button to the app folder from the components folder. I'm just going to drag and drop it over there. And update the imports over here. And let me just, just in case, restart the server and open up the browser. And now we are seeing 
a lot of red over here, but yeah, we are getting an error saying that React context is unavailable in server components. So what's happening in here is that now that we are using the login button component inside of the app there, it is by default rendered as a server component. And if we take a look on the login button component, we can see that we are using click handlers and the session over here and all that kind of stuff that goes with client components. So let's just first define that, hey, this is client component and we can do that by adding the use client at the top of the file like this. So now let's save it and see what happens. Okay, we get an other error saying that use session must be wrapped inside of a session provider. So if you remember, we used inside of the app JS this session provider. So now we need to add it also to our uh, app folder. So the best place for that is inside of the layout or the root layout. And we could add it over here. So wrap this whole thing inside of a session provider or just the children or that kind of stuff. But a better way I think is to actually define a new component called providers that will then have all the uh, providers that we need and it will wrap the children inside of those providers. So that sounded very complicated, but let me show you how to do it. So let's add a new file in the app folder called providers. And this now will be a client component. So I will add the use client and then I will import the system provider from next auth like this and then I will export a function and I will get the children from the props and then inside of the function we will return the children wrapped by the session provider. So like this. It looks like I have a typo over there like that. Okay so now what this component does is it adds the session provider around the children that are passed for this component. So now we can in the layout import that providers and then we can use it over here in the body like this and then just move the children inside of that providers tag like this. Of course we could wrap everything inside of the return statement inside of the providers but we really don't need to and it's not a good practice to do it like that. So we will just wrap the children inside of the providers and that should do it. And one thing I want to mention also is that if you have uh, more providers or some context stuff, you can just add them inside of this providers file and wrap this inside of them. So that way you can have all your providers inside of this file and the layout file will look just like this. So now let's save this and check out the browser. And let me refresh the page and looks like it's working. So we are getting the same information we got with the previous version. So it's our login information or the user information. And now if we sign out, we are signed out. Let me refresh the page. And now if we click the sign in, we are prompted with sign in with GitHub. So let's click that. And the login seems to be working. One thing we actually forgot to do was inside of the login button to move this user information inside of the app folder too. So let's do that. So I'm going to drag it and move and update the imports like this. And let's save the login button and switch the browser. I'll refresh the page and it looks like everything is working. So this is a bit weird because if we take a look on the user information component, so now that it's inside of the app folder, it should be rendered as a server component by default. And as we can see, we have no use client statement inside of it. And we are not using any state or click handlers or that kind of stuff. So I would assume that it's a server component right now. And we can test this by adding a console log over here, saying that hello from user information. And let's save that. So now if this is run on server, we should get the console log down here. But if it's run as a client component, 
it should be displayed in the uh, JavaScript console of the browser. So let me just switch to the browser, refresh the page, and looks like it is displayed in the JavaScript console down here. And this is a bit surprising for me. So the only thing I can think of is that because we are rendering it inside of the client component, uh, this component will also be rendered as a client component. So basically the user information component can be rendered as a server component, but if it is rendered inside of a client component, then it will also be rendered as client component. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And if we wanted to render a server component inside of the client component, we can do this with the uh, children prop. So let's see how that is done. So first of all, I will just add a new component here that I will use as a server component. I will call it app description. And let me just add some code inside of here like this. So we are just exporting a function with the text that this is the application description and it's a server component. So now how we can render this with our uh, client component? Well, let's switch to the page.js and modify this login button rendering. So I will add like this. And then we can pass in this component as a children for this login button. So let's first actually import it like this. And then we can just pass it in over here like so. And let's save this. And inside of the login button, we can now render this with the children. So let's say we want to render it under the sign out button. So let's add it over there like so. And I need to still define the children or get the children from the props like this. And it looks like I made a typo again. Okay, now let's save it and show it in the browser. So we can see it is displayed under the sign out button. So let's log something inside of this component like this. And now if I go to the browser, I refresh the page. We are only getting the hello from user information in the browser console. And now in the server console, we are getting the hello from app description JS. So this component now is rendered as a server component because we used it with the children inside of a client component. Okay, but next you might ask that, okay, can we use this session data inside of a server component like the app description, for example? The answer is yes, we can, but it's still uh, in beta and very unstable. So next auth provides this unstable get server session function. And as they say in here, uh, this feature is still experimental and it might be removed or changed in the future. So I would keep that in mind when using this, but let's see how this function can be used inside of a server component. So I'll switch back to the VS code and let me add a couple of lines of code inside of our app description JS component, and then let's go through it together. Okay, so what I did here was I imported the unstable get server session function from next auth. And then I get the session inside of the component with that function like this. And then we are just rendering the username under the uh, text div over here. So let's save this and see if it works. So let me refresh the page and yeah, looks like it's working. So we are getting our name under the text down here. So this is pretty cool. And again, we are not getting any logs from the uh, app description JS inside of our uh, browser console, but we are getting them inside of the server console. So uh, that just verifies that the component is rendered in the server or as a server component. So now that we have the session data available inside of our, our server component, uh, what we could do is use the user information component to display that data. So let's do that next. So first I'll import the user information component. And then instead of this username, I will just render the user information, pass in as a data the 
session.user like this and let's save it and actually go into the login button and let's comment out the user information from there so we are not rendering it inside of the login button anymore and we are just rendering it inside of the app description so let's save it and switch to the browser and let me refresh the page and now looks like that the user information is displayed under the text inside of the app description component and what we can see also is that there is no console logs in our browser console and if we check the server console we can see that we have a hello from app description as expected but then also we have a console log from the user information component so now that we are using the user information inside of the uh, server component that is the app description the user information component is also rendered as a server component so just to recap on what we did in here so let's open the layout the root layout so first what we want to do is wrap the children with the providers component and the providers component had the session provider from the next auth and it basically just wraps the children inside of it so that's the number one thing we need to do when adding the authentication for our application and then if we take a look at the page.js in here we have the login button and that is a client component and we are getting the session information in here with the use session hook from the next auth and then based on that display uh, sign in or sign out buttons so if you are using client components in your application this is the way you can get the user information inside of the component and then if you are using a server component like we did with the app description you can get the session information with that unstable get server session function but again I just want to remind that it's still unstable so there might be changes or it can be even be removed so just keep that, in, keep that in mind when using it. So with that function, we get the same session information inside of a server component and we can use it over there. And if we still take a look on the page.js, so what we learned also is that if you are rendering a server component inside of a client component, it will be rendered as client component. So if you want to render a server component as a server component inside of a client component you need to pass it for the client component as children as we did in here so the app description is a server component and we passed it in as a children for the client component login button and that way we were able to render the app description component as a server component so i think that's something you need to keep in mind because what I was thinking at first is that if I just wrap the uh, children with the providers and then uh, put my components in there and that, all that stuff, uh, you might end up pretty easily using just client components. So I think that's really something that uh, we need to think through when creating the uh, hierarchy for the application and how we are using the components in the component tree because otherwise we can just end up using client components and we get none of the benefits that come with server components hopefully you found this video at least a little bit helpful and it helped you at least a little to understand how to use the authentication inside of the next.js 13 app directory and if it did please do leave a like and hit the subscribe button too if you are not already subscribed. And if you want to learn more about Next.js 13, do check out this playlist over there. It has all my Next.js 13 videos.